Here at the University of Birmingham, we have an amazing team of paleontologists from all over the world researching all types of ancient creatures. From the biggest dinosaurs to the smallest microscopic algae. With our friends at the Labworth Museum, which is just next door to us, we all work together to try and answer important questions. Whether that's what the oceans looked like in the past, or how climate change impacted ancient animals. In these videos, you can meet some of our paleontologists, and we hope you learn something cool today. In this video, we'll be talking about a type of fossil you've probably never heard of or seen before. Some fossils are super small, so small you need a large magnifying glass or microscope to look at them. These are called microfossils, and the scientists that study them are called micropaleontologists. There are many different types of these microfossils. One of these are foraminifera, a single-celled organism which are either planktic, meaning they float around in the ocean, or benthic, which means they live at the bottom of it. These are about the same size as a grain of sand, which may sound very small, but as you'll learn soon, it's actually still quite big. By studying the foraminifera fossils, we can figure out what the ocean was like in the past. By looking at the chemistry of their shells, we can figure out what the temperature was when they were alive, as well as what the chemistry of the ocean was like too. There are also ostracods, which were about the same size as the foraminifera. These are tiny crustaceans that also lived in the ocean. What's different about these though, is they can also live in other bodies of water, such as lakes. Like the foraminifera tell us what the oceans were like in the past, the ostracods can tell us what the lakes were like, whether they were deep and what the chemistry of the water was like too. Both of these, although small, can be seen with the naked eye or with a magnifying glass. The ones we'll be talking about today, however, are much smaller, measuring 3 to 30 microns. These are called coccolithophores, and they are single-celled, plant-like organisms that live in the ocean. They've been around for a really long time, the first ones dating back to more than 200 million years ago. You can learn a lot of really cool things from these critters, just like the foraminifera and ostracods we mentioned earlier. They're really important in modern day oceans because they store a lot of carbon dioxide and are at the base of the marine food web. But they're also really important when looking into the past as they can tell us what the ocean chemistry used to be like millions of years ago. Echolithophore refers to the whole organism, the cell inside and the plates on the outside that make up its shell. The plates are called crocoliths and are made of calcite, a white mineral that is robust. For aminifera and ostracots, shells are also made up of it too. When we look down the microscope, it is usually the single crocolith plates that we are able to see. These crocoliths come in different shapes and size whether that's round or oval, shaped like a pentagon, or even some look like stars. To be able to see these nanofossils, we need to first get some samples. To prepare these samples, we need to be in a science lab so everything is safe. Firstly, we get a small piece of rock, put a bit of water on it, and then rub it and smear it onto a glass slide. We then glue another very thin piece of glass on top to protect the sample from being touched, and once that's dried, we can put it under the microscope to look at. Because the nanofossils are so small, we don't need a lot of sample at all, just a crumb will do. When the sample is under the microscope, paleontologists that specialise in nanofossils can identify different species. This information is recorded, which we can then analyse for a lot of different things. The rocks that we get these nanofossils out of come in all different colours and ages, but they all have one thing in common. They were all formed out at sea. When a coccolithophore completes its life cycle, it sinks to the bottom of the ocean. Even though they are so small, when there are a lot of them, they can build up to massive things. One cool thing is the white cliffs of Dover. These are mostly made up of these tiny coccoliths. Rocks that contain nanofossils are formed at the bottom of the oceans. One way we can get them is through scientific ocean drilling. This means that a big ship sails into the middle of the ocean and sends a drill down to the ocean floor and brings up long cores of rock and sediment, which are then brought back to shore and studied. These cores can help us answer a lot of questions about the ocean's past, as the deeper these cores go, the older the rocks are that we recover. Many scientists at the University of Birmingham have been able to go on these scientific expeditions, working with scientists from all over the world to answer questions about the unknown corners of the oceans. And one of these scientists is Mariam, who will explain a bit more about what it's like to be at sea. 
The best part of being a micropaleontologist is that you get to work on board research vessels such as the Geodes Resolution. The JAR is a state-of-the-art floating earth science laboratory with analytical equipment that allows scientists to conduct research at sea as soon as the sediment cores are recovered. Scientific expeditions normally last two months and everybody works 24-7 in 12-hour shifts non-stop. There is a day shift and a night shift and nobody has weekends or holidays. However, in these expeditions, which I like to call adventures, you can reach the most remote areas of our planet. In my last polar expedition, IODP 383, we didn't see land for more than 60 days and we had to run away from a 20 meter wave forecasted storm. Sailing is a unique and exciting experience in which one gets to work very closely with other scientists from different nationalities and backgrounds all aiming for excellence, and who end up building long-lasting collaborations and friendships. We really hope you enjoyed this video and learned some neat stuff about coccolithophores and what it's like to be a paleontologist at the University of Birmingham. Feel free to check out our other videos where you'll be able to meet some of our other paleontologists and learn even more interesting things.